Create key social media profiles. With your blog and website in place, you now have a destination for your social media followers, a place to send people where they can find out how to work with you or buy from you. Your blog shares your knowledge and perspectives on your profession or industry, and your website offers solutions. Social media is where you connect, share links, and network. It isn't where you overtly sell. Once you send prospects from social media to your blog through sharing a hook and a link to your latest blog articles, each article should close with a link to that part of your website that offers ways to work with you or buy something from you. These days, if you claim to be an authority on any subject and you aren't featured on at least Facebook and LinkedIn, you're not considered a real expert. Knowing that, it's simple to start or upgrade your Facebook page to begin positioning yourself as a go-to source for information, help, and advice related to your personal brand. You can post short videos about useful topics. You can write short advice pieces on a single subject. You can survey your followers, run contests, let them in on your latest project, and even advertise to get more people into your network. LinkedIn is an even more important social networking site if you are a career professional or business owner. Now, with more than 250 million members worldwide, up from just 8.5 million in 2007, it's literally the world's largest professional network. So not only does it provide opportunities to connect with people who can help your business, it's the ideal recruitment platform for new clients and customers. Depending on your personal branding and the advice or information you'll be distributing, other social networking sites you may want to use are Google+, Pinterest, YouTube, plus the many thousands of sites dedicated to specific themes or subject matter. Post regularly. Of course, once you launch your social networking profiles, you'll want to post regularly. Nothing looks worse than having large gaps in your posts. It makes you look inattentive and unprofessional, even though you may have nothing important to say for weeks or months. Some experts recommend that if you're not able to maintain your social media pages, that you disable them for a time until you can return to them. Building a brand takes diligence and effort, so stay active and connected. After all, connecting is what social media is for. Limited unrelated personal content that could detract from your brand. Finally, consider limiting your personal and non-career material that shows up online, or at least limit it to social media pages that are private for your family and friends only. Unless your lifestyle, family activities, romantic relationships, parties, vacations, and other aspects of your personal life are part of your brand, Keep these matters private via social media groups that allow you to restrict who sees what you share. Throwing your private life open to the world by posting personal photographs, opinions, tweets, and details about your downtime activities will detract from your brand and gives your followers permission to judge you and maybe even a reason to question your expertise. Be real. Be personable online. But keep most of your private life private. A perfect example of this is a colleague of mine who, in addition to being an internationally recognized business expert and best-selling author, is also an award-winning floral designer, popular design lecturer, and published floral artist. She was twice named Flower Arranger of the Year, travels the world attending flower shows, wins countless awards, and is even on track to become a nationally accredited flower show judge. But while she has every reason to post positive content about her hobby, you won't see photos of her work or invitations to attend her floral design lectures, at least not from her, anyway. Why? Because she has carefully evolved her more important persona, that of a veteran business strategist, published business author, and noteworthy speaker. Knowing how Internet content can spread and how easily it could cause confusion with her potential customers, she has chosen to proactively shun the spotlight when it comes to her hobby. Step 2. Make sure your online content advances your brand. 
Today, nearly two million names are searched on Google every day. Almost the entire population of the United States and Europe combined. Even more important, the Washington Post reports that 75% of human resources professionals are required to research job applicants online, with a whopping 70% having rejected job candidates in the past following such searches. What was their biggest factor in deciding not to hire someone? Provocative photographs posted by the job candidate on their own social networking page, or even on the pages of their friends. The trend has become such a career killer for young professionals that one university actually purchased reputation management services for every graduating senior, where online experts search out and delete questionable content. Today, what you say and do online has the power to affect your professional future. So what can you do to transmit your online persona in a way that advances your brand and builds a rapport with your market? just as successful people do. Live Your Brand Moses Ma, co-author of Agile Innovation, a revolutionary approach to accelerate success, overcome risk, and engage everyone, recommends that you live your brand, meaning to actually be, think, breathe, and eventually manifest the ideals that you seek. Most people simply come up with a few words to slap on their social network profile. To be truly successful, you need to manage your thoughts, be conscious in how you act, and be aware of how you are received by your friends, partners, clients, prospects, vendors, colleagues, everyone on the web. If you're branding yourself as someone who is good at something, try to be helpful, informative, insightful, not only for the clients who are paying, but for everyone. Share some of your secret sauce wherever you post, comment, or upload. If you're innovative, demonstrate that. If you're a great coach, don't just include testimonials. Offer some coaching through your blog. Unleash your participation. The Internet provides an amazing opportunity to engage with others. Don't just sign up and lurk around. Get involved in conversations. Be genuinely interested in what people do, and help others if you have a fact, contact name, idea, or something else that would be valuable. Contribute to the community and give before you take. You not only should follow and comment on others' blog posts to give them encouragement, but also make an effort to participate on Twitter, too, following people and posting tidbits of information. Get good enough at it so you know what a hashtag and Hootsuite are. Let your handle, avatar, and wallpaper express your personal brand. Cultivate your online presence. Nothing is worse than dealing with someone who talks only about themselves at a party, or who glazes over when you're responding. The Internet is no different. To be present online means to be more interested in other people then you are in advancing your own message, who they are, what makes them tick, what makes them happy, and what excites them. Even on a chat board, you should be fully present when you read what others are saying. Once you feel empathy, you will want to help them get what they want. And that is the way to build the helpful, insightful, wise, and value aspect of your personal brand. Command Positivity there are a lot of negative, critical, sarcastic, and cynical people online. Don't be one of them. Your positive energy and attitude is like a ship carrying you across a sea of online activity and helping you navigate your online journey. Don't just float aimlessly like a life raft. Be the captain of your ship, steering it toward your goals with purpose and positivity. Positivity starts with being friendly, loving, and caring. Make an effort to be polite to everyone you meet or are seen by online, and it will put your offline reputation in a good light, too. So don't just be nice to prospects. Be nice to everyone. Make an effort to appreciate something about every person you interact with online. Make an effort to uplift them in some small way. I'm reminded of the week I spent in Bermuda for a meeting of the Transformational Leadership Council. As several of us were boarding a local bus for dinner on the other side of the island, 
a young man who worked in the kitchen of our hotel boarded at the last minute and, with no other seats available, took a seat next to Reverend Michael Beckwith, one of the teachers featured in The Secret, a star of his own upcoming movie and largely heralded as one of America's most popular spiritual thinkers. While Michael could have sat in silence next to the hotel worker, he instead struck up a spirited conversation with the young man. Exhibiting the same enthusiastic interest and friendliness to him that he had exhibited with the other high-level important participants at the TLC meeting. I believe that I should treat people like I want to be treated. That means any online effort requires serious, relentless, mutual commitment to the people involved with that effort. Craig Newmark, founder of Craigslist.com Craigslist.com founder Craig Newmark explains this kind of online presence as a permanent listening-slash-action cycle. You ask for community feedback, you do something about it, and you repeat. Forever. This was Craig's formula for building a community website to connect the world for the common good that surpassed eBay and traffic in 2010 with over 50 billion page views per month. Your personal brand and this energy of positivity, or lack of it, radiates around you much like an energy field. So be sure that you have genuinely positive energy at your core before you go online. That means that even on your worst days, even after life-draining meetings, and even with a lifetime of potential baggage, allow your core to shine. Speak with impeccability. Use empowering words when you post. Always respect other viewpoints in a controversy. Assume that other people have the best intentions, even if they don't. And be a person of integrity, both online and off. Radiate the energy of success. Inspire people by sharing your success stories. Share inspiring quotes, articles, or books you've read. Help others by revealing your way to success. Don't keep everything for yourself. Not only do people learn through stories, sharing in this way humanizes you and helps them see what's possible for their lives. Share your why. According to Simon Sinek, the New York Times best-selling author of Start With Why. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Why did you decide to start sharing information as an expert in your area? Why do you approach your work in the way that you do? What keeps you excited every day in your career path or field of study? Your why should be the single most powerful, clear, positive idea that comes to mind when anyone thinks of you. It's what you stand for, the values, capabilities, and attitude that people associate with you whenever they see you on the web or whenever others refer to you. By defining your personal why first, you'll have interested and open-minded listeners when you describe what you are doing, how you are doing it, why others should be interested, and what you have to offer. Forge Deeper Relationships why the Internet can be a very transient, anonymous place, with people dropping in for a few minutes but never staying long enough to get connected. You, on the other hand, have the ability to forge long-lasting relationships simply by approaching your online time with deeper relationships as your goal. The Web now gives you the chance to build a powerful support team, connect with potential mentors, create a mastermind group, or simply develop supportive friendships in chat rooms, forums, and membership sites with people who are on the same path as you. Once you've established a connection, feel free to ask for what you want and need. But similarly, be someone who is approachable for help by others. Give before asking. Follow the conversation and offer help in context with the discussions and communities where you find yourself. In his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, author and social media expert Gary Vaynerchuk explains that for years, marketers crafted two different approaches to selling online. One, high-impact campaigns designed to knock sales out of the park, the right hook. And two, patiently nurturing relationships with customers over time, the jab. Now, because of social media, he says, 
The winning combination of jabs and right hooks has changed, requiring online marketers to create content that is specific to the communities and conversations within individual social media platforms. The only way to appear engaged on all these different platforms is to be engaged. Get out there and forge strong and meaningful relationships with those who need your help and are more likely to speak up on your behalf and tell others about you. It doesn't matter how many friends you have on Facebook or how many people follow you on Twitter. What matters is how strong and resilient those relationships turn out to be. Upload photos and videos. People online relate best to other people, not words or images. So get out of your shell and start taking more photos and filming more short videos of your work, your interests, your advice, and your customer interactions. If you feel online video is just another overhyped, passing fad, says a Forbes.com article, think again. It cited a study that showed video was a better producer of sales leads than white papers, e-books, and even live demonstrations from sales reps. As humans, our brain's function is naturally drawn to faces, motion, and sound. Susan Weinschenk, Ph.D., who consults to companies like Walmart, Amazon.com, Best Buy, and Disney, uses brain science to predict, understand, and explain what motivates people and how they behave. She says there are four reasons why online video is compelling and persuasive. 1. The fusiform face area of the brain forces us to pay attention to faces, so we connect more readily with what's being said. Additionally, this part of the brain also processes emotions, so viewers often achieve an emotional connection with both the message and the person delivering it. 2. The human voice conveys rich information. In fact, just the tone of voice you use to deliver your message will impact what viewers hear. So be careful to convey enthusiasm, authority, even excitement, depending on the response you want from viewers. 3. Emotions are contagious. Due to the human-to-human -human interaction that video provides, video helps you communicate excitement and passion for a topic in a way that the written word simply can't convey. 4. Movement grabs attention. Over the course of human evolution, our brain has become programmed to pay attention to movement in our peripheral line of vision. This means we listen to any message when movement is attached to it. And finally, Susan advises video testimonials are social validation on steroids. They combine social proof, brain sinking, and emotional content. You just can't beat this for converting someone to your line of thinking. One of my top students, Mykola Litansky, who lives in the Ukraine and teaches the success principles, posts a video blog, what's now called a vlog, every day. Before he did this, he was attracting 50 or 60 people to his trainings. Now, because of the engaging nature of the vlogs and how viral they have become, he attracts 600 or more participants and has grown his business to an over a million dollar a year enterprise. Step 3. Monitor your online persona and clean up any negative information. One of the hottest trends, especially for entrepreneurs and small businesses, is reputation management, the monitoring, correcting, and enhancing of online information about you and your business. And whether this information takes the form of reviews on consumer sites, photographs of you in dubious situations, posts or videos you have uploaded, third-party blogs featuring you or your business name, or even someone infringing on your trademarked product name. Online content about you and your business can be inspiring, informative, or downright embarrassing. Not surprisingly, a whole new crop of service providers has emerged to help you manage your online reputation. Whether you own a business, are graduating from college and launching your career, or recently decided to take up a worthy cause. Even personal relationships that have ended or former business relationships that turned sour can be managed or minimized online through reputation management. But before you hire a professional service, there are things you can do on your own. We've put up an entire tutorial and checklist online 
to help you through the process, including a list of reputation management companies that can eventually take over the process from you when the time comes. Visit www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. Scroll down to Principle 64 and click on the link. Suppress your past if you can. In Europe, it's easier than ever. Of course, if there's something terrible in your past that you cannot have removed, and you're now a person of integrity and impeccability who truly wants to make a new start, you should take advantage of right-to-be-forgotten privileges that let you petition to have inadequate, irrelevant, or excessive information about yourself hidden on Google. Nearly 12,000 people completed petitions the first day they were available, after the European Union's Court of Justice decision compelled Google to make the service available. The United States version of Google is not yet regulated in this way, but it's worth checking into with major search engines and individual websites where you live. Brand yourself with a TED Talk Perhaps the penultimate experience for personal branding is to give a TED Talk or a TEDx Talk. Since its start in 2009, TEDx events have been held in 167 countries at an average rate of eight per day. If you haven't yet discovered TED Talks, go to TED.com, click on the Most Viewed tab, and watch a few to get started. And later on, click the Explore the Whole Library tab. I do my best to watch one TED Talk a day. All the talks are by people who are geniuses and leaders in their field, who have presented talks at the TED conferences over the past years. Here are some of my favorite top-rated TED Talks. You can find them all on YouTube. Sir Ken Robinson Do Schools Kill Creativity? Tony Robbins Why We Do What We Do Dan Pink The Puzzle of Motivation Brene Brown The Power of Vulnerability Jill Bolte-Taylor my Stroke of Insight Simon Sinek How Great Leaders Inspire Action Dan Gilbert The Surprising Science of Happiness Angela Lee Duckworth The Key to Success Grit Visualize Yourself Giving a TEDx Talk TED CEO and curator Chris Anderson shares what it takes to create a truly compelling TED Talk. When we first experimented with giving away TED Talks on the web, our main concern was that no one would watch. Why would you sit through an 18-minute lecture when there's a whole world of hilarious cat videos to be explored? To our astonishment, the talk started to go viral. And it happened because our speakers were tapping into something amazing and primal. In certain circumstances, an idea resident in a human mind can resonate with the same insight and excitement felt by the originator. For this little miracle to happen, it needs all the help it can get. The ignition of curiosity, clarity, humor. The stripping out of needless jargon. And yes, in some cases, an emotional connection to the speaker is a valuable ingredient. You learn more from people you care about. We appear to have found an approach that appeals in our 18-minute format. But can you share something worthwhile in 18 minutes? Definitely, unequivocally, yes. The Gettysburg Address made history in a ninth of that time. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, 16 minutes. Our instructions to speakers include, Substance matters more than performance. Personal connection may be good. Emotional manipulation is not. And there is no formula. Give the talk in your own way. And that's a perfect recipe to maintaining your personal brand. When you share, blog, or comment, always remember that substance matters, that personal connection matters, that you must be true to yourself in every way. Here's a powerful visualization. See yourself giving a TED Talk someday, or something similar to it, because that's where we're heading. So do whatever it takes to give that speech. This might mean figuring out what you want to say. It might mean getting some training in public speaking and developing on-stage presence. It might mean putting yourself out there, getting rejected, getting feedback, 
getting better, and finally getting it right. When you have something truly worth sharing with the entire world, something that you are absolutely passionate about, it'll be given a chance to happen. The secret sauce of digital success is passion. In closing, the secret sauce for branding yourself successfully in the digital age is passion. It's all about finding your own voice, finding your own way, finding a kind of creativity that you can call your own. It means allowing your intuition and inner brilliance to lead you, like an unseen hand, to your own path in defiance of accepted norms or current trends. Passion is something within you that provides the continual enthusiasm, focus, and energy you need to succeed. But unlike feel-good motivation, derived from external sources, true passion has a more spiritual nature. It comes from within. And it can be channeled into amazing feats of success. You can absolutely succeed and thrive in the digital age. Don't tell yourself you're too old or too techno-challenged. Get outside your comfort zone and gain confidence with all things digital. The only barrier today is your own belief. Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia, once said, Imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. That world is today. The sum of all human knowledge is there for you, like an ocean of information and data. It's up to you whether you want to stand on the beach or learn how to swim. Principle 65. Use social media in a way that enhances your reputation. The Internet has been the most fundamental change during my lifetime and for hundreds of years. It's the biggest thing since the invention of writing. Robert Murdoch, chairman and CEO of News Corp and 21st Century Fox. Over the years, a lot of business people, sales professionals, and consultants have questioned whether social media really works to create more customers. It's consumer-oriented. It's mass market. And while some people say it's the only thing they use to market their business, others say it's a lot of time spent for not much return. Frankly, the reality has probably been somewhere in between. Today, however, social media has finally hit the tipping point where, instead of seeing a lot of interest but not many takers, we're now seeing millions of followers convert into buyers, whatever that term may mean for you. If you're using social media and the Internet to advance your expertise and enhance your personal brand, this has great relevance for you. Whether you own an actual business, are involved in a charitable cause, have an idea for a new social movement, or are working to build your career, not only that, but social media has matured now to offer new ways to connect, so it's easier than ever to reach out to the right kinds of prospects. How to get followers to stay engaged with you. What's the most powerful aspect of social networking for advancing your personal brand? Attracting followers who will stay engaged with you and your message, then pass on your information to friends, colleagues, and their own fans. To reach that goal, you'll want to maintain an ongoing presence on the most popular social media sites. And today, the biggest site out there is Facebook, with 900 million users around the world. Of course, we've already recommended that you maintain a private Facebook page for sharing personal information and photographs with close friends and family. But you can also create a Facebook fan page for your business, career, or cause. See Create Page for a Celebrity, Band, or Business on the Facebook homepage. Once you do that, you can use a number of strategies recommended by Facebook to increase your visibility, engage better with your fans, and improve your chances of being shown in Facebook's News Feed, a continuously updated list of stories from people and pages that an individual Facebook user follows on Facebook. Not only can an individual user adjust their settings of which types of posts they want to receive on their newsfeed, but Facebook uses its own formula to determine which posts get used. Popularity of posts is one factor in the algorithm. So be interesting, be engaging, be helpful, and create each post in a way that people will want to hear more. This requires more than just product announcements. 
What does Facebook recommend to better engage your fans? 1. Use rich media in combination with written words. Rich media such as photos and videos are known to get more attention and help your message stand out. Posts of about 100 to 250 words are recommended, as are lifestyle-type images. Try sharing photos of people living your recommendations or using your product. 2. Increase engagement with your Facebook posts by creating a two-way conversation between you and your followers. Post a quote, a video, or an idea, and ask followers to share their thoughts, feedback, or their own stories about what they've seen. On my Facebook fan page, a short article will generate 10 to 20 comments in response, while a cool quote I found or short video from me will inspire over 1,600 comments. Big difference. Also, posting information that shows you listened to the feedback helps create further engagement with your followers and builds loyalty. 3. If you own a business, share discounts and promotions that are exclusive to Facebook followers. Always include a clear call to action with the exact steps to take to redeem the voucher or coupon or discount code. Plus, always tell when the promotion will end in order to create a sense of urgency. You can drive readers directly to your page on your website to improve online sales. 4. Provide access to exclusive information. Janet Switzer uses this to launch her clients on Facebook or provide a boost where they need to get more followers. She broadcasts an email to the client's list, and lists owned by helpful colleagues or endorsers, offering a special report or other items of interest, then asks them to like us on Facebook in order to get the report. Similarly, you can make people who are already followers feel special by sharing exclusive product news, contests, and events. This boosts loyalty with people who are already followers, but also drives online sales. You can do individual giveaways or a 10-day series of giveaways. 5. Tie your Facebook posts to current events or other things that are trending and top of mind, including news stories, holidays, and consumer trends. Reply in a timely way to comments on your page. The faster you reply, the more likely fans will engage with you in the future. 6. Plan a calendar of Facebook activity, even if it's just a calendar of those ideas you want to talk about each week or each month. This will help you stay on track with posting on a regular basis, but also ensure that your content is well-planned, interesting, and that you don't miss using Facebook for major business events and news. How frequently should you post? That's really determined by trial and error. Find a frequency that works for you and your followers. 7. Once you find a frequency that works, write your posts in batches ahead of time and schedule them to be posted at specific times by clicking on the clock icon of your page's sharing tool. You can also schedule your posts to appear when most of your fans are online. To find out when this is, Visit your Page Insights and go to the Posts tab. Scheduling posts is a great time manager. 8. Target posts to specific demographics within your fan base. If some posts are meant for specific groups of people, you can manage these posts in your Pages Sharing tool by clicking on the Target icon at the bottom left corner and selecting Add Targeting. Facebook compiles information like gender, relationship status, educational status, interests, age, location, and language from your followers, and will carve out a specific group for you using those details. 9. Create posts in such a way that they drive readers to your website. For me, this is the ultimate value of Facebook, because, as sometimes happens, Facebook can limit the connection between you and your fans at any time. But once these followers have migrated over to your website to opt in to your email list, you control the communication with those names. And don't be nervous about reports that no one is using email any longer, or that people are solely using Facebook for email. That may be true for younger populations, but it is not true for business-oriented older demographics. To create links from Facebook to your website, go to your page's sharing tool 
enter the website address or URL where you want to send people, then hit Enter. 10. Check the performance of individual posts to see where you can improve. You can see what's working by going to the Page Insights area. This also will help you better understand your followers and create Facebook content that continually engages them. Treat your followers the way you would like to be treated. Authenticity is the key to keeping social media friends, fans, and followers engaged. Be humble. Let others talk about you. Never be selling. Protect your reputation so that it's as golden offline as it is online. Avoid giving out your own political, religious, or medical views, unless your personal branding is based on those subjects. Learn how to brag in a way that gets people to cheer you, not envy you. Humble bragging is the annoying technique of telling people how fantastic your life is, while interjecting self-effacing humor or fake woe-is-me claims. Jean Twenge, a psychology professor at San Diego State University and co-author of the book The Narcissism Epidemic, Living at the Age of Entitlement, says, Bragging alone makes you sound like a narcissist. Twenge says, Humble bragging makes you sound like a narcissist who is also being deceptive. It's normal to want to share the awesome things that happen. Share the good stuff, but share it sparingly. And remember your audience. And if controversy isn't typically part of your subject matter, don't engage in online combat over others' controversial viewpoints, but instead diffuse them using the feel-felt-found social persuasion technique, typically used by salespeople and advocated by Wired.com. Wow, I totally see why you feel the water legislation is a real threat. I felt concern for my property values, too. But then I found this article about how we're not getting the whole story from either corporate interests or our state legislators. Use the social media that's appropriate for your subject matter and career. If you're an actress, Facebook and Twitter will help you manage your fans. But if you're a bank president or a Supreme Court judge, Pinterest and Facebook's consumer focus simply aren't for you. For most professionals and corporate employees building their career, LinkedIn is the ideal professional networking platform for you. But by contrast, it's difficult to get respected on LinkedIn if you are a professional clown, mime, or comedian. Professional practitioners and small business owners should check into the many social media platforms specifically for your industry. One word of advice, by the way. Do not participate in any schemes to buy friends from dubious companies who claim they'll add thousands of Facebook fans for a fee. LinkedIn is the main platform for business professionals. If you're a corporate employee or a business owner selling products and services that business people need, LinkedIn will help you represent yourself as an authority in your field. To create your profile, decide how you want to represent yourself and whom you want to attract as customers, clients, or supporters. While this may seem basic, you'd be surprised how many people add information to their LinkedIn profile that doesn't really serve their recruitment effort. For instance, if you're now an executive coach or management consultant, do we really need to know that you studied yoga or became a certified massage therapist in 1984? Also, remember that LinkedIn profiles are about specific people not companies. So if you own a business, choose someone to be the face of the company on LinkedIn, if it's not you, or decide which multiple employees will be listed. Once you decide, create as complete a profile as possible using good marketing strategies. For detailed information on how to write a powerful LinkedIn profile, visit Janet Switzer's blog at www.janetswitzer.com forward slash blog. Use LinkedIn's email feature to add contacts that align with your skills and experience from a wide range of companies. This starts your tree or physical network, which will allow you to expand your contacts exponentially. Next, reach out to your contacts and ask for a recommendation. This serves as a testimonial on your profile. You don't need a lot. Try to get four or five at minimum.
Once you've built your profile and started seeking recommendations, it's time to get recognized as an expert. To do this, start participating in LinkedIn groups. LinkedIn has fostered all kinds of groups of like-minded people in similar fields, areas of expertise, or lines of work. You can participate in these groups and become known among others in the group who could be potential clients or customers for you. Find a group or groups of professionals that match your interests or industry. Then, from the group's main page, you can share links and start discussions. It's a great way to make new professional contacts. You can also help out on LinkedIn's Answers section, which showcases your knowledge for all to see. And you'll also likely be helping out a potential future client. These days, there's so much more to do on LinkedIn that can build your personal brand, including publishing articles based on your expertise. And while LinkedIn is not the only marketing method available to you, though it's one that many people solely rely on, it can bring you new connections, new recognition, and new business. And like Facebook, it's some place you'll need to be found in order to look legitimate. One final reason to upgrade or start a profile at LinkedIn is that Google's love affair with LinkedIn will get your website ranked higher, too. Here's why. LinkedIn lets search engines like Google view and rank the data in LinkedIn profiles. As part of your LinkedIn profile, you should always list your website or blog, along with descriptive copy that helps the search engines find them. Google gives LinkedIn profiles a fairly high ranking when it comes to returning search results for end users. Hint, be sure to set your LinkedIn profile preferences to full view, so your website slash blog shows up in the publicly viewable profile. Principle 66. Use the exponential power of crowdfunding. Co-authored with Moses Ma. Crowdfunding is nothing new. What most people don't know is that the Statue of Liberty was crowdfunded. What's different today is that you have access to so many more people than you otherwise would. Erica Leibovitz, Director of Marketing, Indiegogo. In Success Principles 17, 18, and 19, you learn that you should ask, 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 reject rejection, and use feedback to your advantage. Well, there's a perfect place to practice all three of these principles. Crowdfunding which is the collection of funds through small contributions from many people over the Internet in order to finance a project, venture, or initiative. This exciting new way to get your vision off the ground achieved a tipping point in America with the passage of the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Jobs Act, signed by President Obama, which reduces the regulatory burden on emerging companies and makes it easier for them to go public. These crowdfunding platforms have helped fund everything from startups, film and music projects, nonprofits, and all types of small businesses in between, as well as helping individuals and small groups raise money for things like college tuition, medical bills, sports teams, and volunteer trips. Crowdfunding websites have helped people all over the world raise money, growing exponentially from $89 million in 2010 to $1.47 billion in 2011, $2.66 billion in 2012, and over $5 billion in 2013. Growth is expected to double every year, and more than a million individual campaigns have been established globally so far. Recently, the World Bank commissioned a study on how crowdfunding would grow, and their most conservative estimates predict that it will grow into a $93 billion investment market by 2025. What it takes to work the crowd. If you're looking at how to run a crowdfunding campaign, it's good to learn from a winner. The most successful crowdfunding campaign ever was for the Pebble Watch, a customizable watch that could display messages and alerts from your iPhone or Android smartphone, as well as run a variety of apps. The founder, Eric Mijakovsky, failed to raise enough money through traditional venture capital sources. So Pebble Technology launched a Kickstarter campaign on April 11, 2012, with an initial fundraising target of $100,000.
Backers spending $115 would receive a Pebble watch when they became available, $99 for the first $200, effectively pre-ordering the $150 Pebble at a discounted price. Within two hours of going live, the project met the $100,000 goal, and within six days, the project had become the most funded project in the history of Kickstarter up to that point, raising over $4.7 million with 30 days still remaining in the campaign. On May 10th, Pebble Technology announced they were limiting the number of pre-orders, and on May 18th, funding closed with $10,266,844 pledged by 68,928 people. So if you're looking to go out and give crowdfunding a try, here are some principles that help the pebble become successful. These are all things you can do by yourself, and for next to nothing in terms of cost. 1. Use the power of storytelling. As humans, we feel first and think second. And the best way to evoke an emotional response is to tell a great story, and to do it on video. So if you want to crowdfund, think of yourself as in the movie business. Kickstarter.com reports that projects including a video get successfully funded 50% of the time, while those without are only 30% likely to fund their project. Projects that include a video raise significantly more money, too. The surprising thing is that those videos that have helped raise the most funds are not the ones that go hog-wild on Hollywood production values. The videos that work the best are modest and direct, and simply say, This is me, and I'm not hiding anything. More important, they allow you to present your passion honestly. Check out Pebble's video. It honestly expresses that they don't have the money to shoot a professional commercial. It's rough at the edges and clearly homemade. But it exudes an adorable quality of earnestness and sheer likability that no advertising agency could match with a $200,000 production budget. No one will want to invest in something that doesn't pique their curiosity. Photos and text aren't enough to tell the full story. You must go deeper and connect your future customers with the people and personalities behind the product. And you must do so in an authentic way. I think we accomplished all of this with our video, which featured our entire team and was shot at our corporate headquarters, better known as my apartment at the time, in about a month. Eric Mijakovsky, founder and CEO of Pebble Technology. Remember, donors and venture capitalists never invest in an idea. They invest in a person, you. When describing yourself or your idea, use simple and clear language that gives an honest and concise portrayal of who you really are as a real person. And more important, show that your passion is real and worth supporting. 2. Execute flawlessly. Having a great idea for a campaign is one thing. Executing it is another matter entirely. Once you have your story down, the most important thing for your campaign is to reach more people. So get out there and beg your friends to participate, bloggers to write about your campaign, and most important, get testimonials from everyone you can to include on your campaign page. When you look at Pebble's campaign page, you'll see that it offers a plethora of quotes right at the top, from people and organizations endorsing it, including the celebrity author who invented cyberspace, William Gibson. Plus, the site offers a media kit for bloggers and very compelling materials for creating viral articles. The secret sauce for a successfully funded Kickstarter project is frequent and managed updates. If you talk to anyone who's run a campaign, they'll tell you that spikes in funding follow major updates. Seeing updates makes people relate to you as a person, makes it believable that the project will get completed, gives people something to share with others, and keeps you in their mind space. 3. Build and reward your community. Just as you wouldn't embark on a major expedition into the wilderness all by yourself, it's really important to build a team for crowdfunding. You'll need a solid core team of hard workers who can help manage daily promotion, thanking donors, and other essential but time-consuming tasks. Once that core team is set, then get out there and beg every friend and family member to actively champion your cause, 
or at least cheer you on by making a contribution and sharing the news about your campaign with everyone they know. Get out there on Twitter and Facebook. Do what it takes. The three most important keys to succeeding with crowdfunding are community, community, and community. It is vital to pre-rally a large group of people who are eager to commit the minute the crowdfunding campaign goes live. I call this technique rumble, lightning, thunder. You have to start with a rumble before the campaign starts and sign up hundreds of people to commit the instant you launch. It's a lot like a book getting released. If the initial sales are strong, its success is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's important to gather your instant liftoff community before you launch. And when you launch, you have to execute like lightning, flawlessly, without a hiccup. If you're fast out of the gate, the bloggers will invariably report about you. You go to the top of the what's hot list. Herd behavior sets in, and it's all to your benefit. That's the thunder stage, when the herd starts stampeding toward your campaign. Next, you need to reward your community. This is pretty obvious to most people already. But if you're kickstarting a product, having the product included in one of the reward levels is crucial. It's one of the main reasons for most backers giving their money to most projects. Still, it's amazing how many campaigns forget to do this. Kickstarter's mission is to help bring companies to life through a community of supporters. We wouldn't be here without the close to 70,000 people who believed in our product. It's all about giving the people what they want. Without them, none of this would be possible. Eric Mijakovsky Finally, don't be shy. Get out there and engage people. This is the time to learn how to collect no's with style and panage. If you study the Pebble campaign page, they do this really well. 4. The Birth of a Brand A campaign on a crowdfunding site is sort of like a newborn baby. It's a beautiful thing. And part of the beauty is to see the birth of your brand. And the essence of your brand is trust. So what you need to do is communicate on multiple levels this credibility and your expertise. This is something the Pebble team pulled off seamlessly. When watching your video and reading your project description or updates, it's important to answer over and over that you can do it, that you will do it, that there is no way in the world that you won't do it. Keep expressing gratitude for the people on your team who have the skills to make it happen. The key is to have your audience empathize with you. 5. Ask nicely and be grateful. This seems obvious, but you'd be surprised how many campaigns never ask for the money. They describe the need, they exhibit passion, but there's no call to action. Be sure to add language that tells people what actions they can take to help your campaign. And when you ask, ask nicely. Finally, thank every one of your supporters, contributors, and donors at least twice. And not just for a successful campaign. Thank them profusely so they'll sign up for the next campaign. Where to find a crowd The combination of all of these five factors is what made the launch of the Pebble Watch the most successful Kickstarter launch of all time. Ready to give it a try? Here are seven sites to check out to find the one that's best for you. Kickstarter.com is the 800-pound gorilla in crowdfunding, originally designed and built for creative arts, but many technology entrepreneurs now use the site. Some have raised millions of dollars. Check out the Kickstarter campaign for the Coolest Cooler, which had only $50,000 as their original goal and had raised over $10,056,281 from 48,141 people at the time I wrote this, to underwrite production of a beverage cooler for the beach that has a built-in battery-powered rechargeable blender for making margaritas or smoothies, a waterproof Bluetooth speaker, a USB charger, an LED lid light, wide rolling tires, and several other cool features. You can learn a lot from this campaign. Indiegogo.com allows you to raise money for absolutely anything, using an optional keep-what-you-raise model with higher fees or paying less to use an all-or-nothing funding approach. 
My favorite Indiegogo success story is Solar Roadways, Inc., a startup company in Sandpoint, Idaho, whose goal is to replace current petroleum-based asphalt roads, parking lots, and driveways with road panels made from recycled materials and incorporating photovoltaic cells that generate renewable energy that may be used by homes and businesses. They raised over $2 million for their project. Fundable.com is another major crowdfunding platform that offers both rewards-based campaigns, where backers are able to pledge money to startups in exchange for rewards or pre-orders of the goods that business will produce, and equity-based campaigns, where accredited investors, those investors with a net worth of at least $1 million, are able to invest in startups on the equity portion of the platform for small businesses. Recently, a startup called TuneGo, a new platform to support independent artists in the music industry in building their careers, publishing and distributing their music, and getting radio play for their music, raised $774,000 on Fundable. GoFundMe.com is a personal fundraising website that has helped thousands of people raise millions of dollars for causes like school tuition, sports teams, medical bills, volunteer trips, business ideas, special events, and travel expenses. My favorite GoFundMe success story is 13-year-old Chandra Stars. Chandra and her mother were once homeless, but after finding stability, housing, and steady work, Chandra set out to collect a million pennies, $10,000, in order to feed the homeless in her community by building vegetable gardens. She surpassed her goal by $4,500. StartSomeGood.com is ready for early-stage social good projects that are not yet 501c3 registered nonprofits. It uses a unique tipping point model for fundraising that lets you collect money as you raise it. One of the features at their site is a free nine-part email course called Crowdfunding 101. A nonprofit in Los Angeles called the Do Good Bus wanted to take their bus on the road with the band Foster the People and visit 22 cities with the intention of involving young people in working with at-risk youth, music education, gardening, and soup kitchens. With 680 contributions ranging from $1 to over $10,000, they raised $101,781 to fund their trip. In Dallas, the Do Good Bus prepared more than 8,500 meals at a food bank. At the Austin City Limits Festival, they worked with local do-gooders to raise $12,981 toward purchasing equipment for firefighters battling overwhelming wildfires in Texas. Due to a matching contribution, more than $25,000 went toward that cause. Causes.com is designed to help connect people who have a common cause and to empower them to take action, including but not limited to raising money, $48 million so far for registered nonprofits to make the world a better place. The fees are low, and all donors on the site understand that all of the contributions will be tax-deductible. Crowdrise.com is a site for charities to raise money, with the novelty being that anyone can sign up to volunteer to launch a fundraising campaign for a charity already registered on the site. All of these sites are making great things happen for real people every day advancing the arts, entrepreneurship, and philanthropy in myriad ways. Kane's Arcade When I was researching crowdfunding, I came across an inspirational story that I simply must share. In the summer of 2011, nine-year-old Kane Monroy spent the summer building an arcade out of old cardboard boxes and everyday objects in the front of his father's auto parts store which is more like a warehouse in East Los Angeles. The arcade consisted of all kinds of ingenious games that Kane designed and built himself, including a ticket and prize redemption system using his old toys like Hot Wheels cars as the prizes. You have to watch the video Kane's Arcade on YouTube to get the full scope of this boy's monumental and creative accomplishment. The only problem was that because of the store's location, and the fact that most of its business was fulfilling orders online. The arcade had no customers 
until on the last day of summer, when Nirvan Mullick, a filmmaker, came to the auto parts store to buy a door handle for his car. Intrigued by the arcade, he bought a two-dollar fun pass and became Kane's first customer. Impressed with the boy's creativity, optimism, and perseverance, Mullick organized a crowd of more than a hundred of his friends and followers on Facebook to surprise Kane by all showing up as customers at his arcade. Mullick captured the whole event on film, and later released an eleven-minute documentary, Kane's Arcade, on Vimeo and YouTube. It immediately went viral with more than one million views the first day. In 2012, Mullick created a crowdfunding scholarship fund for Kane with the initial goal of raising $25,000. But $60,000 was raised on the first day, and $170,000 the first week. With more than 19,000 individual donors, the total fund is now at $239,000, with the ultimate goal being $250,000. And that's not all. Kane, who is now only 12, has been invited to speak at the USC Marshall School of Business, the Lions International Festival of Creativity in Cannes, France, and recently spoke at TEDx Teen, hosted by Chelsea Clinton. And after he and Mullick spoke in Denver at the 2013 Colorado Innovation Network Summit, Kane was offered a full scholarship to attend Colorado State University. Inspired by Kane, Nirvan created the Imagination Foundation, whose mission is to create a world where creativity and entrepreneurship are core social values nurtured in schools, homes, and communities everywhere where all children are taught to be creative thinkers and doers and encouraged to make their very best ideas happen. One of their main projects is the annual Global Cardboard Challenge, where kids of all ages are invited to build anything they can dream up using cardboard, recycled materials, and imagination, and then come together to share what they have created and play on October 11th, the anniversary of the day Mullick surprised Kane with a hundred customers at his arcade. In the first two years, more than 100,000 kids in 50 countries have participated in the Cardboard Challenge. You can learn more about the Foundation and the Cardboard Challenge by visiting www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. Principle 67 Connect with people who can expand your vision. Facebook was not originally created to be a company. It was built to accomplish a social mission to make the world more open and connected. Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook. What's the most powerful aspect of the Internet today? Its ability to connect you to millions upon millions of people who can share your passion, support your vision, give you advice, and show up to help you achieve your dream. In fact, never before in the history of mankind has there been a resource like it, one that puts the achievement of your loftiest goals within reach. Of course, your job is to use this tool to achieve what you want. Then expand your thinking to enroll and positively impact even more people in initiatives that will improve their lives. Alone, you may not have had the power in the past, but with the Internet and current technology, Pursuing social good, as well as your own objectives, should be an important goal of every success-principled person. Connect like-minded people to support your goals through crowdsourcing. When we published the very first Chicken Soup for the Soul book, little did we know that it was one of the very first crowdsourced books in history. Dozens of people gave us content in the form of individual stories, poems, and cartoons for the book. It was so successful that the entire Chicken Soup series of books was compiled using this method. At one point, we had hundreds of professional writers and everyday people contributing stories for future books we wanted to produce. It's a model that not only worked, but it became even easier with the connecting power of the Internet. What is crowdsourcing, and how can it help you to pursue your goals? Merriam.Webster.com defines crowdsourcing as the process of obtaining needed services, ideas, or content by soliciting contributions from a large group of people 
and especially from an online community, rather than from traditional employees or suppliers. Start wide, expand further, and never look back. Arnold Schwarzenegger, actor, philanthropist, and former governor of the state of California. If you're a would-be author, but can't write well, or can't get started, crowdsourcing can help you complete your manuscript. In fact, Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki crowdsourced his recent book, Conspiracy of the Rich, by posting the introduction online, then inviting his millions of existing readers to comment and provide their ideas about the remainder of the book's topics. Not only was it great market research about what people really needed in a financial book, but also, as part of the commenting process, contributors had to register and agree that Robert could use any of their comments and ideas in the remaining chapters of the book. If you're an entrepreneur with a great idea to provide a unique service in cities around the world, but can't deliver the service yourself or don't want to, there are incredible success stories of businesses that have been launched by recruiting others to deliver the services for you. Uber is a smartphone app that will reserve a taxicab for you or find you a rideshare in major cities by texting taxicab companies and private drivers for you. In other words, no single taxicab company supplies all those drivers. The services are crowdsourced and the app even helps you find the car's exact position on the street outside your location. Other businesses have been launched by crowdsourcing services from thousands of individual providers, then simply building a website portal to link buyers of those services with the service providers themselves. One of my favorites is 5RR.com, a website that represents freelancers all over the world who will do small jobs for just $5. And the online freelance marketplace Illance.com connects graphic artists, writers, programmers, and other creative professionals around the world with businesses who need seasoned workers but who want to outsource the work instead of hiring an employee. Elance charges the providers a small percentage of each transaction and in 2013 booked $300 million worth of projects through its website without providing any of the creative services itself. Get help with your projects through virtual assistants, or run your entire company virtually. One of the truly life-changing aspects of the digital age is that the Internet gives talented people the ability to work from anywhere, as long as they have a computer and an Internet connection. Not only has this created a massive shift in how, when, and where people work, it has given rise to an entire virtual workforce that includes remote workers, flex time workers, outsource vendors, and virtual assistants. If you own a consulting business in New York, for example, you can hire a marketing director in Texas, an after-hours answering service in Iowa, a personal assistant in Maryland, and a bookkeeper in Ohio, all in addition to your regular employees, or even in place of them. The concept of a virtual business, where every worker lives and works remotely, has been around for several years, but the digital age has made these businesses more manageable and more productive than ever before. You can now hold video staff meetings with your entire team, for free, using Google Hangouts. You can instantly transfer files while talking or messaging at no cost on Skype. And for a few dollars a month, you can rent a virtual phone system that will route inbound calls to your company's individual departments even though your workers live in several different cities. Hire a voiceover artist on 5RR.com to record your phone greetings and routing prompts, and your virtual company will sound as professional as your biggest competitor across town. What's truly exciting about the virtual assistant model is that the Internet also makes it possible for people in more developed economies to hire part-time workers in other countries, like Romania, India, and the Philippines paying them rates that are excellent hourly wages in those countries, but that are a fraction of what comparably trained professionals would earn in more developed countries. It's not uncommon for MBA-level accountants, veteran programmers, and smart research assistants to charge only between $7 and $18 per hour for first-rate work. Build a Virtual Mastermind Group Today, the Internet allows you to build a mastermind group much more easily, 
because now your reach is global, and your ability to check references, get referrals, and find the right mastermind group members is unlimited. There has never been a better time to build a mastermind group, and with technology like Skype, Google Hangouts, and GoToMeeting, you can hold a mastermind group meeting where everyone participates via video with group members from all over the world. Not only that, but technology makes it inexpensive to use compared to the long-distance phone call fees of the past. Plus, you can share documents, slides, photos, and other information while you interact. If you lead seminars or workshops, or you're thinking about it, check out Maestro Conference. You can run a live seminar online for groups up to 5,000 people or up to 2,000 screen share users. You can subdivide them into partners or small discussion groups, and you can listen in on their conversations just as you would if you were walking around a room in a regular classroom setting. People can ask questions by digitally raising their hands, and you can spontaneously call on whomever you want. Or you can pre-screen written questions and save time by not answering irrelevant ones. It's just like a live seminar. Plus, Maestro offers top-notch personalized training in how to use the system.